I think if we look at the longer time frames, the um, uh, crypto winters, what people call uh, crypto, goes, crypto and stock markets go through four year cycles. Uh, in crypto, the Bitcoin happens every four years. In the, uh, in the <clears throat> normal traditional world, um, US pres presidential elections are every four years. So there are four year cycles in our society. And we have seen stock markets go through four year cycles and crypto so far has done, have, have done, gone through four year cycles. Not to say history will predict the future, but if we, based on the four-year cycles, then the winter will last, you know, a month to um, a couple of years probably. And then um, I think we're like one year in from the um, pr previous all-time high. Um, so the, um, the, the inflation, the interest rate adjustments, etc., those all uh, affect uh, the markets, but those are short term. I think longer term, Given how much money was printed over the COVID um, uh, last couple of years, uh, the amount of quantitative easing that was done, uh, inflation will definitely kick in um, just by simple logics. Um, and then um, cryptocurrencies, the big ones, you know, Bitcoin, BNB coin, Ethereum, they're, they're limited supply, so their supply didn't increase. Um, and the number of people getting into this industry and the utility, the number of people who need to use those um, uh, coins have increased, the demand have increased. But today, unfortunately, so in theory, um, uh, the, if we go by supply demand, um, there's a very simple uh, logic to derive from that. But today, um, the crypto, many people trading cryptocurrencies are also in the stock market. So when the stock market tanks, um, people want to hoard cash and they also sell cryptocurrencies. So today, on the short uh, time frame, it's kind, of, it's kind of coupled. But in theory, they should be decoupled. CZ, as we talk short term, the merge is almost upon us and for Ethereum, a new operating system, about a day out for the countdown. What's the buzz in the sector and what sort of volumes could you anticipate on the back of the merge? Um, I think the merge, so many, again, many people, many people have very high short-term expectations for the merge. They think, you know, the Ethereum gas fees will drop from $10 per transaction to two cents overnight. Um, that's most likely not going to happen. So that's, it's a long process. The Ethereum upgrade takes uh, multiple stages over multiple uh, months or years. So, but it, it is a very good development though. Um, um, it is, it is progressing the right direction. So, and it is a strong innovation. So the, uh, the merge will, hap will happen today or tomorrow. And then, um, uh, but the fee, the Ethereum gas fees will not drop immediately. But um, when the other upgrades like sharding kicks in, um, that's when we f expect those fees to drop, which is a fantastic development for the industry. Um, can I ask you, I, I'm very interested in this story developing in India um, around your business, where um, you're seeing a migration to your platform as traders worry about having to pay the levy the Indian government is now imposing on transactions. Are you ultimately going to um, act on behalf of the Indian government and, and take that transaction tax yourself and hand it on? Or are you going to continue to operate on the basis that it's not your problem and someone else needs to deal with it? Um, so to be honest, the situation is not clear. Um, I tweeted a long time ago when they were talking about this transaction fee, which is 1.2% on every single transaction for each buy, each sell. That basically will drop, like if you're an active trader, if you trade 50 times a day, you're going to lose all your money. Uh, we have many traders which trade much more frequently than that. So which basically means that um, uh, order book trading the, uh, will, not be, will not be existent in India. So which basically means that, you know, um, the, the type of business that, that we run will, not, will no longer be feasible in India. Um, so um, that's basically the end result. Um, and uh, I think not just us, there are many international platforms. I tweeted a long time ago, like, look, if you try to tax uh, crypto transactions like that, it's like shooting birds in, in a tree. If there's 10 birds in a tree, if you shoot one down, um, there's not going to be nine left. The other nine will fly. So. <clears throat> Um, so that's, you're not going to tax, you're not going to get all the tax revenues based on previous volumes. Um, so um, I don't think there will be any order book trading in India. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.